let's I'm going to shelve that conspiracy theory because I love it. It's a really good one. Um, but let's let's dive into the cookie stuff. Sure. OK. Um, this is the correct screen. Um, so I got stuck here because and of course, I can't find my sessions controller. Um, I got stuck here because this if statement uh, that we worked on last time. Yeah. Uh, checking for this remember user token in in the console it returns true when oh. you expect it to return true but it doesn't actually work in real life oh no yeah ah. so like, the logic was sound and the code made sense to me and um i even tried adding this so Other stuff yeah yeah so if only the remember user token is there like this cookie will appear it, it doesn't and then just pushing up all my work so I didn't have to think about it if my computer did load, I ran into this error in like two tests. And I've come across this uh, no method error for strip before. And the only thing I had to do was stub my test and it cleared it out. But that is not working. Yeah. And I am stuck here because strip doesn't exist anywhere. Yeah, that's wild. Hmm. Capybara slow finder on the sign in spec. Hmm. That's yeah. So I don't know. Do you wanna do you wanna start trying to start the GDK and run through sign ins and and, and yeah. tweaking and testing things out that way? Or do you wanna fix this try to fix this strip thing first? Um that's a good question. Cause I've been stuck on both of these for a while oh. and I have no op like I have my brain is empty. Let's see if we can fix. Let's see if we can fix the strip thing first. Okay. Uh, so it looks like in sign in spec on line twenty six is where some of this is getting kicked off. Or we click button sign in with undefined method strip for nil class. Mm hmm. Capybara slow finder. Why would it have a hard time finding that? Uh, can we go ahead and open up that file? The spec support Capybara slow finder. That's referenced um, at the top of the stack. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not doing anything. Um, hmm. Do you have um, strip for nail nail class? Yeah, that that stack trace is like not really helpful at all. No, it's not. And I have been down this rabbit hole. It took me yeah. I think three days to fix this the first time. <laughs> oh no. Um, okay, but is this a result of? Is this from something has changed? And it's is now adding, failing. Yeah, it's from adding these two methods in the sessions controller. Because if I delete them, then everything works. So I thought, cool. If I oh, stub wow. them, wow. stubbing makes sense. What? But I've I've tried stubbing them here in this before, and then I just tried to stub it in like the general spec helper, like the global spec helper, and that also did not work. Okay, allow to. Res I see. I see. I think, um, does it automatically mock it if you do the allow to receive? Or does does it still pass it through? I thought it still passed it through. Okay. But like it was just kind of ignored. Like, oh, I, I don't know what this is. Here's a value. I'll just keep going. I see. Yeah, let's just, just for fun, maybe we could try just commenting out in the hooks of the controller. Um, yeah, maybe we can try commenting those out and seeing if it works now. Man, that is weird if it's uh, part of those. Yeah, let's try that out. Trial registrations. Mm -hmm. All right. Is is it running and is it is it thinking about things? 
yeah, it, it takes a minute. It also needs its coffee. <laughs> I know. Have you um have you ever run do you do you run spring at all? Mm-mm. Um so anytime I run RSpec, I'll do bundle exec. Oh, nice. So it's working now. Um spring RSpec. Okay. And it increases increases the runtime because spring is like a server that's always running in the background and caches some like Ruby stuff it reads. So it's like Rather than if you just run RSpec, it's running, it has to read through all the Ruby stuff brand new every time. Spring somehow adds a little spring to its step and makes it faster. Uh, somehow. <laughs> all right. Yeah, but yeah something's, something's off there. Let's try, let's try just commenting out 46. So let's include 45 and see what happens there. Have you already tried this? Yes, but oh, okay. <laughs> let's try it with spring. Yeah. <laughs> no, I totally understand because I was like, huh? <laughs> Weird. This should work. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. Wow. All right. Uh, so then I think it's, it sounds like we know it's not in the destroy class, destroy method. Or at least it's not hitting the destroy method, right? Right. It shouldn't. Okay. Uh, Then can we jump into the method and maybe let's try to comment out some lines that it's not enjoy not liking there. Um. So one thing we could do maybe on line, maybe comment out comment out line ninety eight through a hundred. This I haven't done. I haven't tried dissecting the whole method. Yeah, we'll 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 see. I wonder if it's even the dot com check. Um maybe there's some issue with the way this feature spec is set up and somehow so it still failed. Mm -hmm. Can we comment out ninety seven and maybe it is the dot com check? Maybe it really needs a domain. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Or maybe, maybe there's possible. like other properties of the cookie that it. Yeah, because I've been testing this locally. I couldn't set the domain. Yeah. Um, okay. So it is when we're setting the cookie there, it is not happy at all. Okay. Oh, if I did. And it's this trial registration sign in spec. Uh, yeah, it's this one and one other, but I figured if I could fix one of them, then I could fix yes. that. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. somehow setting the cookie is just yeah causing, causing yeah it doesn't like that the domain is empty and it works now oh wow yeah. wow yeah it was the fact that the domain is empty okay <laughs> good All to right. know yeah that's weird um i so i wonder if like maybe even like copy borrow like didn't know what to do with that you know mm -hmm. um Okay, so to test this out, do we want to give it the actual domain or do we want to um, do we want to uh, like just use we can pass through like the request domain just to hear temporarily. You know what I'm saying? No. 
somehow I think we can get the domain from the request itself. Okay. Um, I don't know how to do that. And I'm really tempted to just ask chat GPT, but <laughs> it's probably not going to give me the right answer. Um, but I am going to ask it anyways. And Rails, how do I get the domain from the request URL in a Rails controller? Ah, oh, it's thinking too long, man. <laughs> okay. All right. And then, then oh. this Rails docs time. Yeah, but this also isn't a big deal because as long as I push this up with this domain and then just tell reviewers, hey, if you want to test this locally, you have to remove this domain first. Yeah, so that, it's available. that makes sense too. That's fine. Um, cool. Oh, wait, I think, hold on. Let me test this because I think for it to be available on about gitlab.com, I have to add this extra period. Hopefully this doesn't break anything. Oh, okay. Do you think? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that still works? That's what I'm testing right now. Nice. Is Hopefully. it? I, I really don't know because I clearly last time we talked too, I don't do cookies a lot. But is it, do you need the star, the wild character star dot or is it just dot? It should just be oh, dot. Oh, it said invalid domain. So maybe maybe it's not so happy with. Yeah, that's that's not good. Because if I want this cookie to be available on all subdomains, I need to add the period. Mm -hmm. And for parent domains only, you remove the period. Okay, so is there another way? Yeah, let's see. I could put this behind gitlab.com. Um, I'm gonna ask ChatGPT. Will it be sent for? Yeah, actually, let me double check and make sure I, I need this period for subdomains. I'm like 99% sure. Must domain match, which basically means it must be the request domain. I think if you just do the gitlab.com on the domain, I think that'll work. I'm looking at a stack overflow answer. Man, I, 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 I'm such a... I'm asking chat GPT, talking to Stack Overflow. I'm not, can't code without the internet. <laughs> on the, um, on the Zoom chat, I sent the Stack Overflow answer, which seems to suggest doing just gitlab.com okay. work. Cause it looks like domain matching is I provide the parent domain and any subdomain of that will will work, I guess. Okay. So it looks like an okay. old, an, the old specification used the leading dot, but a newer specification ignores the leading dot. Oh, you know what? That's probably where I got it from because it's been a while since I've worked with cookies. There you go. So I, I, I have no idea. Um, it's only Sweet. one way to find out. Yeah, I guess, you know, iterate. <laughs> yep. All right. Cool. So we can add a domain to it. And maybe that's also why it's, maybe that's related to why it wasn't working if the conditions weren't working, potentially. Maybe. Um, let me see. Where was, where was I? I was here. <laughs> so many files. Um, now the problem is, is if I set this domain, I don't know if this is going to work locally. If we, yes, yes. So, and I think, um, we would, we would like to not hard code gitlove.com even in the production code itself. So somewhere we, somewhere we get that, like that's in our settings or something to like, what is the. Um, somewhere we have okay reference to settings that actually have like our hosts and stuff. So I'm I'm looking to where we might potentially have. Oh yeah, here we go. Here's like a all 
All right. Here's an example line of code that I see. If you go to um, a file called instance configuration, Yep. And yep. models? I think the models one. Okay. And then on line 35, you see it's some reference to settings GitLab host. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. It looks like we even have, uh, this is the one I was looking for. We have GitLab config GitLab host. Uh, In the same file? No, this is in this is in the project model. So I think this is the I think this is the line that we would potentially want to do. Uh, this way it will work on the GDK and stuff and all the things like that. Um, but GitLab config, GitLab host. Oh, is it. okay. Um, that should work just by itself, I think. Um, I'm hoping that that doesn't like contain. Uh, I'm hoping that doesn't contain the like www or something. I don't think it would. Yeah, and then yeah, we don't want to. We want to get that out of the string. Oh. Cool. All right. Let's double check that we didn't break our test. Uh, <laughs> yes. It's... Oh, I think that's a brief ending. I always like chuckle to myself when websites these days pop up with, hey, this website uses technologies like cookies track. Yeah. And it, it's, it's like, I feel like I'm going to a bakery. Like this bakery uses technologies like chocolate cake to feed you deliciousness. Oh, you, you accept know, our terms of service. <laughs> yeah. That's how I felt like back in the day when new jelly bean or like ice cream cake. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, why is it all sweet? Yes. That's how you know <laughs> developers are just running on sugar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's funny. Um, yeah. Cool, that's great. So we haven't broken our tests. Yeah, let's try running this now locally and see what happens. Let me find out here and switch screens. Um. So just before, just for fun, before we run it locally, do we want to try it with the and the about is not present check, or do we want to try it? Do we want to do it without that one? I think I want it without the about one because otherwise, when I do, when I have a user that uses the remember me box, then I'll have two cookies, which is unnecessary. Yeah. yeah. I, you think you want to do it with it or without it? With, with it. Okay. All right. Let's try it out. Oh, wait. Yay, there's one. All right, there's one. Hooray. Nothing broke. <laughs> we sign out and it, it should be removed, right? Yes. Okay. It did not. It's not removed. Oh, we commented out our destroy method. Oh, we did. Uh, I didn't have to redo that. Yeah, maybe we want to add it back. Yeah, um, I'm glad you remember that because I would have been looking for this for a while. <laughs> oh, delete this. And then sign in again. Okay, Zoom okay. has got to come up with a better way for controls because my Zoom controls are consistently in the way. 
Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh... Oh, yay, that's awesome. It deleted this time. All right, so it's oh. deleted, and then let's remember it. Let's okay. see what happens. Ah, oh. Uh, uh, oh, oh, presence is the it's a question. Oh. So I guess we can just do not present. Um, what line am I on? Ninety-eight. I have a feeling that. Um, oh, but wait. Wait, present should work. Is it? It's present, right? Not present. It looks like it's present with a question mark at the end. Oh, oh, that's why it's mad at me. Okay. Yeah, but I think this, this, this um condition will always be false because on line 97 we set about gitlab active user and so there's mm -hmm. no way it's not going to be present well no for the remember user token if you close the browser that remember user token will be present but the about gitlab active user won't oh i see what you're saying if you close i see what you're saying but I think then the challenge is, oh, wait, 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 oh, wait. I see. But I think then what's interesting is that, so this only runs on the create session hook. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I'm saying? Yes. But doesn't the, like, if the remember user token is present, generates a new GitLab session cookie, which wouldn't that start a new session? Maybe. Yeah, let's let's that possibly. And yeah, let's let's check it out. Or maybe I'm not understanding that at all. I uh there's only one way to find out. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. All right. Okay, cool. I have my active user and this one. Yeah, this is what I wanted. Um if I didn't put that extra um, truthy or falsy value, then I and would have two. Yes. Right. Which is unnecessary. I close this and, um, oh, because I was sharing that screen, everything closed. That makes sense. <laughs> uh, Did we sign back in or are we back? Are we... No, this is just using the remember user token. If I have that box checked, I should need to sign in again when I... Right. But it looks like that hook's probably not getting called. Okay. Then what does get called? I think this is where the that like internal device stuff is going to get called. Okay. But if I remember uh, our conversation uh, last time, yeah, it's not great to have two cookies, mm -hmm. but because of the difference of the lifetime between the two cookies, we might, it might be the easiest thing to do. If we have two cookies, but that second one we set to the same length of time as the remember user token. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yes. But that still doesn't. Oh, and then I guess it wouldn't get deleted when the browser closed. Right. Uh, and so that's just like one option to doing this. And that's a lot of it is because I don't know how to hook into device at mm -hmm. all, uh, which that would be cool. Um, but yeah, so we can have, it, it is basically, so somehow we can, the intent is the cookies that we would you want to be able to read directly from about gitlab.com. Let's make them, let's try to duplicate them so we can't read them, <laughs> which is a little wonky, but. Okay. 
Oh it's yeah. Not- and this is where we got stuck with the expiration of this remember user token because you can't actually read yeah, it. Yeah, you can't figure can't figure out how to read it. And I was trying to do the trying to I asked Chat GPT. Chat GPT didn't help. <laughs> Yeah, and I tried using like the at set cookies and it just had and that the, wasn't working. No, yeah. it just had the GDK running forever. <laughs> that makes sense. So I would um and I think then as, if we can't read from the expirations from the co- cookie itself, because for some reason we were only getting the value, um I would then just we can clone the expiration bit that we're using in uh the remember user token device thing because there was some sort of like expires thing that we set there and we can try that out okay but then would they necessarily have like even though they have the same expire time i don't think they would still expire at the same time because this uh remembered user cookie would have an expiration but it doesn't necessarily mean that it started at the same time as the remember user token that expiration doesn't start until you actually click the box. Um, I right. I think, but that's where our hook comes in. Like all of it happens, uh, on sign in mm-hmm. is when all of these are set. I think. I don't know if remember user token, and that's a really good question though, because it's possible remember user token can get reset another way. Um, I don't really know. Uh, so yeah I mean it'd be great to be able to hook into when devise is doing that like recession stuff yes no I totally agree that's where that's where I'm lost too but but yeah so that's one option and we can go down that option and try to poke at the device controller where or device like I don't know you know what we're setting up with it but we can Um... we can yeah. Um, let me switch over. I think it's this rememberable thing. And this okay. is the only time it's used. Okay. So we could go down that rabbit hole, but um, that one hasn't really led me anywhere. Right, right. Oh, yeah. And that's straight from device. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's your call. So I, I think the two, the two cookie approach is like going to probably work 90% of the time. <laughs> yeah, you know, and then you iterate on it later. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's, that's the, and I think also like evaluating the, um, the criticalness of consistency. Like mm-hmm. if it's very critical that we're consistent, then yeah, probably this, we need to figure out what's actually setting this, but if it's not super critical and like if for some reason these things are off a little bit, um, then maybe that maybe it's acceptable to to just do it at this time. Um yeah, based on what my manager has said, she's not super set on it being critical as long as we can fix it later. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I, I mean this probably gives us the the the, the fastest thing to do then on, on line 98. But yeah, we got to figure out what to put for that ex- expiration. Um, so I think we want to get rid of the, the and D part of line yes. 98. And then I'm looking to see where we do an expires <laughs> on the redirect cookie or not the redirect, the uh, remember cookie. I think there's just a doc that sets it or that talks about it. I don't think we actually set it anywhere. Maybe maybe it comes from that device rememberable thing. Um, let me see. up the user based on the incoming cookie information. Oh. Oh, it does have um there's a remember expires at 
instance method. Wait, does rememberable really apply it on the controller? Because the doc seemed to suggest it should be applied to the user. Uh, is it applied to the controller, the sessions controller? I thought so. Yeah, that's what it seemed yeah. like. Do we do we do we reference remember? Oh, this is the controller. Oh, I'm not in yeah, the right this. place. Okay, got it. <laughs> I, I was looking at the model stuff. All right. Hmm. Do we call remember me or forget me anywhere here in the sessions controller? I don't think so. Remember is that's the only oh do we have other um oh, oh, we have ours right. that we added. <laughs> uh, uh okay. Yeah. Okay. Um Okay, do we want to try to add another price shell and, and poke at some methods that we might be able to use here? Because I'm looking at um I'm looking at this thing. Uh and it looks like we might be able to grab things from the current user. But I don't know if we have access to the current user, so it might it might be worth poking around there. Um I think I think so. I think current users actually used here at some point. So probably. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do we want to try yeah. to do the the price shell? Okay. Oh, yeah. um, where am where am I? Uh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's binding. Yes. That's the word. <laughs> And I think I always mess this up. I think this one is the under the underscore, and then in the terminal, it's the dash. Yeah. Oh, and then let me sign in and sign out. Okay, you're you're okay. signing in on the UI. I am. I oh. I can only see your VS Code screen, so I'm just I'm just double. I'm, uh, oh yes, yes I am. All right. Um, I think I need to sign in first before I do all this stuff. Oh, it's mad that I have this expires here. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fair. <laughs> There's nothing there. <laughs> I know. Just wish it was smart enough to ignore it if nothing was there. <laughs> yeah. And then I will sign in. Um, no, there should be. There we go. There we go. All right. So can we do, um, can we try, is current user available? Yeah. Let's see. I think, yeah, we, is, we don't need the question mark. It should be good just without the question mark. Cool. Great. Um, can we try doing current user dot remember expires at? Oh, current underscore user. Sorry. No. Um... I understood. My fingers did not. No, <laughs> you're good. Dot remember expires at. Remember. Um, and then underscore. Yeah. User. Um, I, I think it's just I think it's just remember underscore expires underscore at, is what I'm looking at here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. You might be able to tab complete. From here. Oh nope. Oh nope. Oh, wait, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Um, am I still at the right spot? Could I? Okay. 
These are um not remember. Where's that? Yeah. Awesome. Sweet. There we go. There's the date. That's how we can get it. Woohoo. That's what we can put in the expiry, the expires thing. Yes. Um expiry oh, expiry. I don't know. I don't know where I'm getting that expiry from. For some reason that is... uh it's from the active session. That's what they hold. Okay. All right. The expiration. And that's what I've been calling. Um, expert. Cool. Nice. I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that might work. I don't know if I need this if statement anymore. Checking uh, the online 99? Yeah. Maybe. Well, I guess that I guess it depends on what happens when the user doesn't check the remember me. Exactly. Um, okay. And let me is it is it escape? Is it is it Q? It's not Q. You might be able Oh yeah, how do you end the it's okay. Pat GPT will know how to do that. Yeah, it's control C. I was like, oh. it's like it's not command C, it's not control. Why can't they all just be universal? Like uh, electronic yeah. car cars in their charger. Everything is universal. <laughs> Same outlet. I'm 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 still a little bitter about USBs not being yes. universal. That that bugs me. The fact that we have different classes of universal serial bus controllers is very frustrating to me. Yes. <laughs> and then Apple just made it worse. I know. <laughs> and I'm an Apple girl. And I'm just like, this is ridiculous. They got sued by the EU uh, for not being, really? Yes, oh, wow. For not using USB C. And then they did the most Apple thing ever and they released their own USB C. And if you don't use their specific one, you don't get fast charging. That is so, so fascinating. Uh, yeah, it's always such a trip for me too. Like if you travel internationally, the outlets are all different. And... Oh, uh, there's cool. my. There it oh. is. Yes. Wait. And... Oh yeah, that should be there. Okay, and then if I sign out, things should get deleted at some point. <laughs> we don't have the binding still, right? Oh, I do. It's right there. Uh oh. Yikes. You might need to hop in the 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 you might need to hop in the price shell to get it to continue. continue. Yeah. Oh. Maybe. Oh uh, yeah. Cool. It's all gone. Great. I do this. They all should come back. All right. If we close and the I, browser. Yes. This is the this is the real test. Yeah. Yay. Nice. So that's where like I think this gets interesting. Is so the is the expire still match on these cookies? I think so. Oh, why did they make this so difficult to open anything on the side? <laughs> oh no, yeah, that's that's really challenging. Uh yeah, you have to squish everything. Oh my gosh. Are you able to like maybe oh there we go. Oh no, the expires is different. Is it? It's these two. Oh, it is. What's 18? Let's yeah. try if we try closing it one more time and then and then opening it again. Can we see what happens? Oh, you know what? It, oh no, because they should be the same. I was thinking it, it should it it makes. I was thinking it should make sense that they're different because one gets set after the other. But I'm literally pulling the the other one's value. I'm I'm wondering if the remember me gets like refreshed, and so ours would only last for three weeks while the remember me like continues to get refreshed. Uh, 
Yes, it is getting later and later. Ah! Yes. Okay. Alrighty. <laughs> well. It was, it was worth a shot. Um, yeah, I don't think our, our approach is going to work. Um, and speaking of iteration, like we could just move forward with this approach and it just works a little bit um, and then try to improve it. It'll work if you haven't clicked Remember Me. Um, but it'd be great to get Remember Me working. So it does seem like we need to hook into whatever recreates that GitLab session thing is we need to hook into that. And that'd be great because then we only get one cookie. Um, okay. Oh, I was secretly hoping, like, I know it's early for her, but I was secretly hoping that Jesse would pop in the one to this one. Of where? Uh, to pop, yeah. pop into this, this session. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. But that's okay. Uh, it's closer than I was yesterday. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, so I see in session store, cookie key, big session store. Okay. Um, session store. Oh yeah, this is about the GitLab session cookie, but this, like you get a new GitLab session cookie when you click remember me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Da, 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 da. And I'm, there was some sort of like session thing that did something with Redis. Uh, I forget. Oh, the, the active session. Active session. Yeah, this thing, and it has a set method somewhere. Yeah. Just I, I kind of think this is where, um, remember me. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, I I just don't understand this file because it's, I don't even, uh, yeah, it's not using, I mean, the device rememberable is not being included here. So I just don't understand how the two connect. Yeah. So I, I kind of wonder if this is used to, this is where we're going to create the new session and under the hood is where that cookie gets stored. Um. And so this happens whether we're doing the remember me checks or whatever it is. And so if we can hook into here and write our own cookie, that would be great. Uh, yeah, that's what Jesse was pointing me in, pointing yeah. the direction she was pointing me in. It's also where I got lost. Yeah. Um, okay. And there's so much happening under the hood too, I know. Like Rails application configure for an after site user. That's where we actually set okay. Active session stuff is like our okay, that's interesting. So that's gotta be like a wrapper for our Redis things. Uh, I was just wondering, we, we... could we try, um, <clears throat> could we try adding a prize shell to, I think we could do that, do it here, but I kind of wonder if we could do it in the this warden file uh, that we oh. brought that one time too. What do you What do you think? Do you think doing it in 
active session or did you think trying out on this warden file? Um, maybe the warden file because that's where this gets called. Okay. Let me remove any changes I did here. That was Jordan. I think it was this one. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we want to add after the active session set a, a binding price shell. And we can see if we have access to like write a cookie here. If if we get to add it, write a cookie here, that'd be that'd be great. That's all we gotta do. It'd be really great. Oh yeah. Um okay. Let me actually comment this out so I can sign out. What's funny though is we'll still probably need the remember me. Wait, will we? No, 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 never mind. Sorry. We might still need two cookies, but maybe not. Huh. I shall. Yeah. Okay. Um I don't know if if Rails will automatically reload all these initializers, so it's possible we need to reload. Rails. Oh, shoot. Okay. It doesn't look like it did that. So let me restart my GDK. You can you can just restart just the Rails part and do GDK restart Rails. Oh, that's a new command. Yeah. With like most of the life cycle control commands you can specify what specific service you want to you want to so you don't have to do the whole thing oh so nice okay and then i guess after we do a login is when this this might get triggered yes it's rebooting oh yay Awesome. Okay. So I see like on line 28, <clears throat> we do like auth.request. I was kind of wondering, do we get like an auth response? No. <laughs> okay. That's fine. Um, I get cookies. Yeah. What is the request? Wow. So those are the requests coming in, those cookies. Um, I don't know if we can add a cookie. Do you want to try to add one? Okay. Uh, uh we let's try to do it from the console and see what happens. Um if we just add like a test cookie. Um adding would be response. Okay, response. Shoot, is it set cookies? I think it's set cookies. I think you can just write to it like we were, potentially, oh, okay. right? We were just doing like auth.request.cookies, square bracket, the name of the cookie. That that might work. Oh, dot. Can I do that? Let's, I don't know. There's only one way to find out. <laughs> Um, or not set cookies. Let's just whatever name of whatever cookie we want to do, like test or whatever it is. And then like, yeah, value. Um, this is all right. In brackets. Yeah, let's see. Okay. Okay. And then so do And then this. if you run um okay, so it's there. If you run um if you run exit, it it should keep the pry shell. Yeah. It should continue. Yes, great, great, great. So continued execution. Go ahead and run exit again. Okay. On the uh, 
the window. Is the new cookie there? The tester cookie that we added just now? Um, I got a request deadline. Like I got an error. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's understandable. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, maybe maybe we can try just adding the line of code here. Maybe that's what we gotta do. Um, okay. Um, Zoom controls are in the way again. Well, I understand why. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cookies equals. Oh, in the bracket. Yes, sir. Okay, while well, that's refreshing, fingers crossed. Yeah, we might need to restart Rails because I don't know if that will when these these initializer files might need to. Oh, you did just say that. I don't think they get reloaded. Um, let's go ahead and quit out of the the binding pride too. So maybe that doesn't get in a weird state. You can. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Is that it? It didn't set it. It didn't work. It doesn't look like it. Hmm. Um. Yeah. Let's see what's. Let's see what other things are there with the the that request object. Um. Well, you know what? It looks like it's set an invisible cookie. I can't see. I have this extra line down here. Really? Yeah. That's very strange. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because that line is not there when I sign out. <laughs> That's. Oh, yeah. There it is. <laughs> That's really weird. I don't. Can you click on the thing that says only show cookies with an issue? Do we have a cookie with an issue? Hmm. What's the thing? What's that button there that was, has like a? Oh, that's I don't know what that says. I don't know what that is. Oh, this clearing the cookies. Yeah. yeah, we don't need to do that. Um. Hmm. Let's let's go. Uh, let's try one more thing out to investigate, and then and then yeah, might be might be at time. Um, can we go back to the VS Code and? Go ahead and let's move our our prize shell. We can get rid of line twenty nine, and let's try moving the binding prize shell into the active session set. As I see that we pass in the auth dot request thing there, and so that this thing gets a reference to the request. So just anywhere in here, I think if we could do the binding prize shell. Um, I want to see what other things are on that request. Sometimes request objects have like a reference to the response object, and that's kind of what we're really hoping for. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, shoot. Let me actually comment this out so I can sign out. But I moved it into here so that we don't have to keep doing that um, restarting of Rails, because this isn't an initializer. So if we add the shell here, we won't have to restart Rails. It should pick it up. Adding it to the warden file 
since the warden files on the, the initializer, Rails isn't automatically going to pick up changes to that file. Um, okay, I see what you're yeah. saying. So we should be able, yeah. And then if we do, let me sign assign it or something. And it's it's thinking. Oh, that's interesting. On that sign out, it didn't delete my cookie. Mm. On so here, if we look for requests, what what's what all lives in the requests? Uh, is there a way? Could we do like um, I think we can do like inspect is a method. You could do like request dot inspect, and we can see some more properties and stuff on it. Ah, that's not helpful. <laughs> uh, uh. And I don't know how to see more stuff on it. What kind of uh? It says it's an action dispatch request. Okay. Action dispatch request. Hmm. Can I do response that picks? Last method, raw request message. Um It's action dispatch request. That's what we're. That's what this thing is. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I just want to know if I can throw the cookie here. Yeah. And there's no such thing as. Uh... Man. Uh... I wish we could get some more. Let's try doing the tab auto-completing. Um, it's not giving us a lot of really great info of our request object. If you do like request, oh, the, yeah, the auto-complete was causing things to blow up on your. <laughs> ah, um, yeah. Um... That's weird. If you do, if you type in. Uh, Yeah, so what's what's tough is just doing this, um, is just doing this string representation of it. I want to see like all of the properties and stuff from uh I'll just see all properties. Yes, 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 yes. Um yeah, can we try doing maybe um, request.methods and we can see all the different methods on the request? Looks like methods might be a thing. Okay, great. Cool. None of these are speaking to me. If you keep going down, we'll see some more if you keep if you keep moving the yeah. There's cookies. There's no response. What kind of alphabetical order is this? <laughs> it is not an alphabetical order. The inspect should have worked. Well, yeah, inspect is there, but it's doing a it's it's just doing like a two string on it, which is not really transforming it well um cookie jar looks fun am i going in a circle now no it, it's oh, post
All right. Okay. All right. We can quit. We can quit this. So, um, I think if we had access to the response bit that we get from controllers, we could easily write a cookie here. But I think that's the big question. So that'd be a great question to bring to uh, Julie. Um, but part of me also wonders if, if you go back to the warden file, on line 28, there's auth.request. Is there an off dot response or something like that? I, I really don't know. Or like at this level, is there another kind of parameter we need to be passing into active session set so that we can do this? Um, I don't know, but being able to act, being able to write cookies from here is the goal. And I'm, I'm not really entirely sure how to do that. You can, um, even share this line of code so you're not like su super just waiting on Julie. Even if you share this line of Wait, code, who's Julie? Sorry, is it Julia? What's her name? Oh, Jesse. <laughs> Jesse. Ah, sorry, <laughs> Jesse. And I'm sorry. Uh, I knew I knew it wasn't Julia, and that's why I was the one with Julie, but it wasn't either of those. It was Jesse. <laughs> At least I knew Julie rhymed. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, no, I would even just leave a a question to this line of code on the development channel or the backend channel of like, Hey, if I need to write a cookie from here, how can I do that? And someone has all the knowledge to be able to do this. Uh, but yeah, Jesse would probably be able to definitely help too. Um, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully this is an iterative, iterative improvement. Uh, but yeah, sorry, we hadn't been able to solve the problem yet. No, I appreciate it because I at least solved one of my problems, which is that strip method thing. One of the problems. Yes. <laughs> cool. And this yeah. one got, yeah, this one got closer. Yeah. The So currently as it stands, we're writing both cookies nicely. We have the ex expiration for that at one, but that doesn't ever update. So it's not going to work out. This is where we'd be able to get it to figure out, be able to hook into it updating. But maybe even just pushing up what you have and sharing that with Jesse, uh, she'll be able to figure out what's wrong. So, uh, cool. Well, thanks for bringing the problem, and yeah, thanks for uh, patiently debugging and throwing things at the wall with me as we try to figure it out. It's, I'd love. I I really want to see what what the solution is because I this is a, obviously a huge gap of the Rails knowledge for me, so I want to learn about it. No, I, I appreciate the help. Thank you. Cool. All right. Well, I'll catch you later. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Oh, it is St. Patrick's Day. I need to put on something green. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye.